All right, now we're ready to do that repair job on the power supply board. Um, of course, you're going to have your board. Um, you're going to need lead-free solder, desolder wick, the capacitor kit with the capacitors we're going to be replacing, and a standard 40-watt soldering iron. First thing we need to do is remove the capacitors off of the board so we can put the new ones onto the board. To do that, you'll use your soldering iron and your desolder wick. Basically what the wick is is a copper braid that will absorb the solder so that we can remove the old solder from the board to remove the components. So you put it on top of one of the solder connections, you heat it with the soldering iron, and the solder will be absorbed into the wick. Then we go to the next one. Basically do the same thing. You have to move it around in order to get some clean um, wick, and then we can just remove the, the defective components. And as we stated just a few minutes ago in the video, um, the capacitors on these are visibly bulging. Um, these are not as bad as some capacitors that we've gotten in. Um, some of them are quite bulging to the point that liquid is oozing out of the top of them. These are just slightly bulging, but anytime they're showing any signs of the bulge, uh, that means the capacitors have failed and do need to be replaced. So we're, what we're going to do now is go ahead and remove all of the capacitors on the board, and then we'll go back and put our new capacitors on and solder them in place. Now there's actually two ways that you can use the desolder wick. Um, this is doing the one way, um, where you're actually, you know, still have the component on the board, and you are removing the solder so that you can remove the component from the board. The other way to do the desolder wick would be to actually take and heat the solder on the board until it melts, pull that leg of the component through, heat the other leg of the component till you can remove the component, and then you just come back and use the desolder braid to remove any remaining solder on the board just to clean it up you know, so that you can install the new parts. Um, either way it does the same thing. What you're doing is removing um, solder off of the board. Um, cleaning up the hole so that you can install the new components in, do whichever way you feel more comfortable with. Uh, they both do the same thing in the end. You just do want to make sure uh, that you have you know, nice clean uh, holes to mount the new capacitors in so that you don't have to have a problem installing them on the board. Now each of the capacitors does have the uh, value uh, printed on the label on the side of the capacitor. Um, so as you're removing the capacitors off of the board, you can write down uh, what value is on each capacitor as you remove it, or you can just remove one capacitor and um, replace it as you go instead of removing them all at one time. Either way. Um, if you need to know which capacitors go into which locations on the board, that is available on the repair guide on our website at www.ccl-la.com. Then look under the monitor section and then find the LG monitors and it will be right there. Okay, now that we have the capacitors removed off the board, we'll populate it with the replacement capacitors. Now on the capacitors, one side will have a gray stripe with little negative symbols. That, of course, is the negative side of the capacitor. And on the board, you have little circles where the capacitor goes. On this particular board, one terminal has a plus sign. The other terminal has a little gray bar. That's the negative symbol on that. So you want to, of course, match the negative symbol on the capacitor with the negative symbol on the board when you're repopulating and putting the new capacitors in. 
Um, if you get them mixed up when you power up the board, uh, the capacitor will be basically shorted, and when you power it up, uh, the capacitor will short out and emit some smoke, and then you'll have to um, get new capacitors to replace the ones that you just did. So do make sure that you have them with the proper polarity. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure on is that you're using the correct capacitors. Um, besides just having the capacitance rating correct and the voltage rating correct, um, you also need to make sure that you're using low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance capacitors. Um, you also need to have high temperature and high ripple current capable capacitors because these are um, switching power supplies that do um, operate at high frequencies and higher voltages that can um, cause problems if you use the, the wrong capacitors. Um, you know, capacitors from a place like a Radio Shack or a local supply store um, are not going to be the right ones. Those are general purpose capacitors. Uh, you may be able to put them on the board and it would work for a short amount of time, but those capacitors on these boards are under a lot of stress. That's part of what happened to the original capacitors. Um, and especially if you have the wrong ratings and values, the capacitor will fail a lot sooner uh, up to like you know just a couple of days and they'll fail on some boards the board will not even function with the wrong capacitors because the um, operating parameters of the board cannot be reached with the wrong capacitors um, also when the when the wrong ones would fail they can cause additional damage to the board so you like I say you do want to make sure that you're using the right value of capacitors um, we do have a capacitor kit with the right values, ratings, and series uh, for each of the boards that the tutorials are for. They are available on our website, again, at ccl-la.com. Um, look at the top and click on the link that says Parts Store, and the capacitor kits are available from our store. All right, now that we have the capacitors installed on the board, now we need to go back and do the soldering. Uh, to do that, basically, you're going to put your soldering iron on one of the terminals of the board. Give it just a couple of seconds to heat up. Then you apply the solder, and the solder should flow freely and make a good connection. Um, it does need to be a shiny connection. If, once you finish, the connection looks kind of dull, that is what is called a cold solder joint. So you need to heat it up, apply a small amount of solder, and let it reflow so that it's a nice and shiny connection. Um, cold solder joints uh, don't make good electrical connections and that can cause the board to not start up properly. Let me just go through here and replace these. It's well worth while repairing these monitors. Um, just takes a few minutes and a couple of dollars in parts uh, to get it going. Okay, now that we have the capacitors replaced on the board, you take some diagonal cutters and you can just cut off the remaining legs where they poke through. You don't want them shorting out. All right, and there we are. One repaired power supply board. Uh, now we'll take it back over to the monitor, connect it back up, and verify that we have an operational monitor.